done this before, but since it, it's such a large cast and she's done so many locations, um, is there any actors you don't really know that well, and is it weird for you to be in a, in a show with someone but not really have met everyone in it? That happens all the time. I meet people in bars that are like, hi, I'm on the game of Souls. And you don't have met them before, that happens, right? We thought maybe we just did today, yeah. We were even in the same seasons. I got lucky because I had, a, I, had a, I had a very special experience in that I was uh, hired out of the US and so I didn't fly back and forth. The entire time I was there, I stayed in a hotel that all of the actors were coming in and out of. So I got to meet a lot of uh, actors that were playing characters that I didn't intersect with at all and hang out. The first person that I hang out with, the, the, the two first guys I hang out with were Kit and John. Because they, they were shooting and I had to go in, like, you know, they were going to decide if they wanted to do my hair, were they going to put a wig on me or not. And Kit comes in and he's like, hi, I'm Kit, this is John, da da da, you want to get me tonight? And I was like, yes! Yeah. Good afternoon. Hope you gentlemen are enjoying your afterlife. <laughs> this is directly mostly to Pedro, but uh, Richard, you're more than welcome to uh, chime in. Um, how do you think the character of Oberyn, such as being a you know a bisexual, affects the uh, American culture because he is so beloved now? And just you um, Richard, would you take that please? <laughs> um, like I said earlier, I think that there's something really special about a character who does, makes no apologies for who he is. And um, I think that for him, he has a passion for living life the way that he sees fit. And, and that comes with the food that he eats, um, the, the, the people he's with, the way that he fights, and the people he loves. And um, as he says, he says, um, he say, then the world is missing half the, the then, then everyone is missing half the world's pleasures. And, and I think that it's very powerful to just have confidence in, in, in who you are and, and make no apologies. You're not hurting anybody. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, gee. I almost got away with it. I'm surprised we don't have to date Me too. Well, you know, you are looking at your own number. Right. So, um... My number is 646. I was here yesterday with Pedro, and because it's a new day, I'm sure the people who were here have a very important question, and it's mostly directed at him. You can answer the second part. Would you tell the naked story? And if not, are there any <laughs> other off-camera funny things that happen? What naked story? A naked story that you wouldn't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, there was so many. <laughs> Would I tell it? I didn't tell it yesterday, but I'm going to tell it today. Darn. What do you want? They, the, what, what I think you're referring to was was there funny off-camera stuff that, that happened? What was an example? And the first thing that occurred to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just, it, 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 just trust me. Okay. <laughs> 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 second part of the question: Are there any other off-camera moments that were funny that you can tell us? The second thing I came through and said is that there's no a lot of laughs. Because people ask us, what's like funny stories that happen on set? And sadly, it's, it's just really serious because there's not a lot of laughs in what's going on. You know, like when my father's dead and I think my brothers are dead and my sisters are probably dead. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Well, you're having enough laughs here. Exactly. How, how, I think what I like most about them is, is, is like this moral compass, how 
his heart was in the right place and he followed it through and he always tried to do the right thing and and did in his head do the right thing and that's what ended up you know getting him killed but he stuck to what he thought was right and um, even if it was going to have bad consequences like cutting off car stark's head he you know that's really screwed him up and you know lost you know that part of losing the war was that too but he knew he had to do it so he did it so I think that was something I kind of respected and admired about Bob Stark.